dear students today we are going to discuss about the brief of all the technologies we have discussed in relation to the energy storage systems in power plants and we will solve numerical problems to strengthen our understanding. So, we will compare which is prominent comparison of the technologies and we will take studies also will solve numerical problems. So, what different schemes we have learned so far as far as energy storage system is concerned. It may be thermal energy storage system, may be mechanical energy storage systems, may be chemical energy storage system, electrochemical energy storage system or it may be hybrid energy storage system. So, in case of thermal energy storage system, thermal energy that is heat is converted to electrical energy. Okay. It may be sensible heat energy storage system or may be latent heat energy storage system or thermochemical energy storage system. So, when we have excess energy or off peak period that energy can be utilized to store in some form say thermal form and when required then that energy can be given back to the grid to meet the demand. In case of mechanical energy it may be flywheel energy storage system, it may be compressed air energy storage system or it may be pumped hydro energy storage system. So, these storage system stores energy when we have excess energy and then it provide electrical energy when required. Chemical energy systems we store in the form of chemical energy and then we deliver the energy in electrical form. In electrochemical energy storage system, we store energy in batteries during the off-peak periods and we provide the energy back in the form of electrical energy to the grid. And in hybrid energy systems, it may be something like based on the situation, we can go for integration of energy storage system. It may be combination of pumped hydro, compressed air energy storage systems or maybe we can have another energy storage system. Say for example, if we consider a compressed air energy storage system, then while compressing the air, we generate heat and that heat can be stored in the form of thermal energy. Okay. So, that may be utilized for other applications or when we are requiring the compressed air, then this air may be passed through this thermal bed or hot bed and that may be expanded in the turbine to get electricity. Okay. So, that way we can integrate many storage technologies for maximizing its efficiency. Also, we can discuss something on its maturity of the technologies. Say for example, if you consider flow batteries, flywheels, supercapacitors, then adiabatic compressed energy storage system, synthetic natural gas, then thermochemical, these are mostly on research and development, but people have already demonstrated its working in many countries. And some technologies are lithium based batteries, then molten salt, ice storage, then sodium sulfur batteries. So, people have demonstrated, but still it has not got that kind of maturity. But when you talk about large scale power generation or power generation through storage system is concerned, then pump hydro is one of the developed technology which is already been commercialized and it has got the maturity. Similarly, underground thermal energy storage 
and then compress their energy storage system. We can also compare the efficiencies of some of the energy storage systems like pump hydro, what is the efficiency it is about 50 to 85 percent and then power ratings, service life and what are the applications like peak load regulation, frequency regulation, then phase shift, then black start it is something like the ability of the generation to restart parts of the power system to require from a blackout. Then flywheel it is normally used in transmission and distribution and it is highly efficient its efficiency varies from 90 to 95 percent and uh, power rating is varies from about 0 to 20 megawatt and life service is about 20 years and it is mostly used in frequency regulation auxiliary services and for power quality and compressed their energy stress is in a supply location and efficiency is varies from about 27 to 70 percent and power rating you can see 5 to 300 and uh, service life is about 30 to 50 years and uh, its application is peak load regulation grid connected renewable energy systems. Now, let us also discuss about this pumped hydro because it has the pump hydro storage accounts for the majority of the world's installed energy capacity. So, if we see here it is about 99 percent of the total capacity. We have all those storage systems like compressed air energy storage, then we have sodium sulfur batteries, lithium ion batteries, lead acid batteries, nickel cadmium batteries, the flywheel, then redox flow batteries. But you can see the kind of share pump hydro energy storage system has. And in India, the total installed capacity is about uh, 57,346.6 megawatt as on 31st May 2023. So, storage capacity is about uh, 127,000 megawatt. So, now let us discuss one numerical problems involving phase change material that means thermal energy storage system. So, in an experiment the paraffin wax of melting temperature 60 degrees Celsius density 920 kg per cubic meter is melted using water at 65 degree Celsius as heat transfer fluid. The height of the tube is 0.6 the radius of the moving interface of PCM has been measured at top and bottom of tube after T1 and T2 minutes which are given below. So, time T1 bottom of the radius is given as 0 0.022 meter and top radius of PCM is 0 0.008 meter. At time T2 bottom radius of PCM is given as 0 0.009 meter and top radius of PCM is given as 0 0.003 meter. So, we need to calculate the volume and mass of melted PCM during the above mentioned period. If we draw this, this is a cylinder So, its the height is 0.6 meter and in the first case at T1 bottom radius is 22 mm I should say. So, here may be 22 so, let us consider this is 22 mm and this is 8. So, 8 may be here ok this is 8 mm and then if we use this so this will be something like this that means 
this is this will be something like this it's like a cone and in this after some time at t2 this condition is something like we will have bottom radius radius is 22 and diameter will be 44 here and this is 8 8 means 16 and here radius is 9 9 into 2 is 18 so this will be somewhat like here and this will be like 3 into 2 6 okay so this is 1 so i can connect it okay so if we have to find out the net volume of solid remained after t1 after t1 time so it will be something like v1 is equal to half pi into h r b square plus r t so we can consider something like average volume so if we substitute the values half into pi height is 0.6 meter and it is 0 0.022 square plus r t is 0 0.008 square so it will be about 5.2 into 10 to the power of minus 4 cubic meter and then the net volume of solid remained after t2 time it will be v2 is equal to half pi into 0 0.6 into 0 0.009 square plus 0 0.003 square so this will be 8.48 into 10 to the power of minus 5 cubic meter okay now we need to find out the volume of liquid pcm during the above period so what will be the volume of liquid pcm which is phase change material during the above period that means when t1 goes to t2 okay so it will be something like v1 minus v2 and this is found to be 5.2 into 10 to the power of minus 4 minus 8.48 into 10 to the power of minus 5 so it will be about 4.3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 cubic meter okay so if you know the density then we can find out what is mass of liquid pcm okay so this mass will be rho into v liquid so this will be 920 multiplied by 4.3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 so this will be 0 0.39 kg okay. so this is how we can find out how much liquid pcm is required okay now let us take an example which is nothing but a case study on compressed air energy storage system assuming like ambient pressure and temperature is atmospheric and temperature is 303.15 kelvin and polytropic index is 
1.3 and outlet temperature of intercooler and after cooler are perfect. And the heat and pressure loss in the pipes are neglected and the change in kinetic energy and potential energy are also neglected and system in any operation mode reaches steady state. So, these are the assumptions we have carried out. So, we will be considering two stage compression. So, we can write the TS diagram based on the information given to us. So, it is something like we have two stage compression. So, we can write a line here. Okay. So, this is also at the same temperature because perfect intercooling is happening. So, this is T1 and this is T2 and this is cooling and this may be T2 days. T1 and T2 days are same and at the same time if we write T3 days here then same are at the same temperature. The this 3 are at the same temperature and this T2, T3 are also same. Okay. So, this is given to us is 303.15 Kelvin. Okay. So, we need to find out what is T2. So, we will do it. So, if we are using two stress compression, then we need to find out the work here and here. If it is intercooler is connected, that means this work and this work will be same. So, work input is something like work input for low pressure compressor, this is low pressure compressor, then we will have high pressure compressor. Okay. So, two stress compression will be there. So, it is something like so, this is at say pressure P3, P2 and then P1. So, this P3 is greater than P2 is P2 is greater than P1, right. So, this is the stage 1 and this is stage 2, right. So, work input can be calculated by using the expression where P2 is by P1 is the pressure ratio and R is the gas constant, T1 is the temperature and this is the T2. So, without knowing T2 we cannot find out this. So, we will do it now and for perfect intercooler T3 this and T2 this is equal to T1. Okay. That is what it is said and if this is the case then we can express work input to the compressor is something like this. Okay. So, we can now find out the pressure ratios as well as the other components to calculate W c. Also, we must understand how we are making the storage system by using this compressed energy storage. Okay. So, here is the compressor 1 and this is the compressor 2. right? and in between we will have perfect intercooler. Okay. Now, here what happens? This is also one heat exchanger because see while compressing it is something like T2 by T1 is equal to P2 by P1 gamma minus 1 by gamma and this is for exponent of the particular fluid what we use. This is air so, we can use the value of air. So, we can find out what will be the value of T2. So, of course, this value of T2 is greater than T1. Okay. So, this rise in temperature also depends on the pressure issues. Okay. So, this rise in temperature we can quantify of course, what is the value of T2? We are doing in the next slide. So, this temperature rise will be here, and also temperature rise will be here in the second compression, right? So now, what we are doing? We are collecting the heat of compression by circulating one pump. So this is the cold storage tank, and this is the hot storage tank. So from cold storage tank, 
we use this pump and then it circulates. It goes through this and then what we do? Cold storage fluid will circulate and this will be stored in the hot storage tank. Okay? And then when required, we are going to release the heat with the compressed air. And then this compressed air will be stored in a compressed air tank at ambient temperature and pressure will be very very high. It is about 40 bar. Okay? And volume is given to us is 1 cubic meter and we will also calculate what is the mass of air. Okay? So, this is in the storage mode when compression will be there we are storing compressed air in one tank and we are storing the heat of compression in another tank by circulating cold fluid in the circuit or you can say in the intercooler or heat exchanger. Right? Now, let us do the calculation then we will go for other mode or expansion mode. So, intermediate pressure of a two stage compressor can be determined by using this expression P2 is equal to P1 multiplied by P2 square root. So, from here we can find out what is P2. Okay? This P2 is equal to square root of P1 multiplied by P3. So, we can substitute the values of P1 and P3 and we can find out what is P2. Okay? As I explained before, we can find out this T2 by using this expression. T2 is equal to T1 multiplied by pressure ratio to the power of gamma or n minus 1 divided by n. Okay? So, if we substitute the value of n, n value or gamma and we do the calculation, it is found to be 464.35 Kelvin. Okay? The outlet temperature of the high pressure compressor is determined from the following equations. So, T3 is equal to T2 bar P3 by P2 bar to the power of n minus 1 by n. So, if you substitute the values then you can find out what is T3. So, this 3 T is also known to us now. And if we substitute all the values and we can find out what is the work required for the two stage compression process. So, it is found to be about 398.372 kilojoule per kg. As per the designer assumptions, the pressure and the volume of the air tank is designed to be 40 bar and 1 cubic meter and the mass of air in the tank is determined from the ideal gas law. Besides, the temperature of the storage tank is taken as the temperature of the air after perfect intercooling which is nothing but the 3 T is equal to T s or it is the same as the ambient condition. And also we can find out the mass of air to be introduced in the vessel which is equal to P s B s by R T s. So, we know all those values now and we can substitute here because the tank pressure is about 40 bar and volume is 1 cubic meter and gas constant is known to us and the temperature is known to us which is ambient. And then the energy consumed by the two stage compressor can also be calculated which is nothing but E c is equal to W t multiplied by M a divided by efficiency of the compressor. So, if you substitute then it is come, come up south to be 21.85 mega joule. Normally what happens when this turbine and compressor sets run together then about two third of the developed power is utilized for running the compressor. So, during the off peak hours this energy this two third of the turbine work can be saved by compressing it in a compressed air reservoir. So, you can see the amount of energy required for storing that much amount of air at 40 bar. Now, we will discuss about the expansion work that means the total work output that is 
work output from expansion turbine. So, we will have two turbines. So, it is something like if we say we can draw T s diagram as well for turbine sets. So, it appears to be something like this. So, I will write one line here and then this is this will be this is about 40 bar and this is 6.643 .6 bar and this is at ambient 1.0132 bar and this temperature is 464.12 Kelvin and this is 303.15 Kelvin. This is entropy okay. and this is the heat exchange part and this is of course, T series and this is T 3. Okay. So, here what happens if we see the block diagram then it will be easier to understand. So, it is something like this in the expansion mode. So, this air has been compressed in the compressor during the compression process. That means, when we have excess energy to store the air. Now, we need to use the compressed air for expansion work or generation of electricity. So, what we do? We will allow the air to pass through a heat exchanger. So, here what happens? The already stored energy in the storage tank or hot storage tank we release it okay? and it will come here and heat exchange will be there and this air will take the hot air okay? and then we can produce energy by utilizing the stored compressed air. Okay? So, again we will have one more heat exchanger before it goes to the second expander. So, we can use this is a heat exchanger again the amount of gas we have which is unutilized we can utilize here to heat the air and we can expand it and we can produce electricity. Right? So, this condition is something like one atmosphere and ambient condition. So, we can we can have all those calculations as done for compressor. So, similar way we can do it. So, turbine work we can do it, it is about 158.22 kilojoule per kg and uh, for second turbine we can do the calculations and finally, total work output from the expansion we can find out it will be about 322.43 kilojoule per kg. And we can calculate the energy generated from the system by using this expression which is known to us. So, turbine efficiency, generator efficiency and turbine work and then mass of the air. So, once we use those expressions and the values then what energy generated can be calculated which is equal to 10.514 kilojoule. Okay. So, now at the end what we are interested about the round trip efficiency of the system. So, which can be defined as energy generated to the energy consumed multiplied by 100 percent. So, if we do that then it is found to be about close to 50 percent. So, this is the way we can do the analysis and we can find out what will be the final efficiency which is known as the round trip efficiency. So, in this exercise we try to give a methodology by which we can design a compressed air energy storage system. So, we would like to summarize what we have discussed today. Primarily, we have summarized all the energy storage systems used in power plants and also we have discussed the kind of energy storage system 
used for higher scale or maybe large scale and the kind of energy storage systems used for short duration like flywheel also now we can use it as the technology advances for large scale applications and long term storage. Also we have studied the benefit of storing the energy specifically these storage systems are very very suitable for renewable energy systems. I hope you have got an idea about various energy storage systems which can be applied for sustainable power generation systems. Thank you very much for watching this video.